Hi everyone, hope you're well. Another episode of Road to Endgame. So sorry, it's been ages since the last video. I think it's been about two weeks. So it's been mega busy, but I will get back into this. I will start doing the Road to Endgames uh, more frequently. I'll try to get at least one or two out a week. Uh, there's not much change really since, well I say not much change. It's I think it's about 10k stages since last one. So last episode ended at uh, 48,500. And now I'm at 58,500. So I've gained 10K stages in that time. And if you're wondering how I did it, just um, same as always, follow a build optimizer, follow uh, an artifact optimizer, and going for all those tips about tournament tips and, and all the, as I mentioned in the previous episodes before. If you want to know about them, you can watch the my beginner's guide video, the top 10 tips that I've posted recently. Uh, those have a bit more information. But uh, I'll give you an update on what I'm doing. So my current build I'll put above my head. That's the latest one I'm using. So this is clanship build. Still doing clanship, even though I've got over 1,000 skill points, 1,400. Uh, normally after 1,000 skill points, people tend to change. But I'm sticking with it because it's still strong. It's still reliable. Matter of fact, a couple of end game players, well, a lot of end game players, still stick with clanship just because it's strong and reliable. Uh, you can swap to other builds like Shadow Clone or Heavenly Strike around about this time but you need to have the right set so if you want to swap to say for example heavenly strike then it's recommended to have the ag set that's the angelic guardian and if you want to do shadow clone it's recommended to have ruthless necromancer i don't have any completed yet so that's why i haven't changed and also um i'm, I'm so far the mythic sets i've completed let's have a look at mechanized sword uh, treasure hunter and ancient warrior that's helped me boost and i'm on the next set which is fatal samurai the only reason i'm going for this set next because i've already had two pieces that had a mythic drop so it was unlocked uh, so i've just literally paid for another one so it's three so it's because it's nearly completed or four complete that one first you're better off completing a set even though it's not like really i probably should have gone for ag next because i want to go towards that direction but I'm doing Fatal Samurai because the Relic Multiplier that you get for it helps you massively. Um, so that's why I chose to do that Mythic set next. If you want to know what Legendary sets I've got completed, I've got uh, Reckless Firepower, Hidden Viper, Nimble, Nimble Hunter, Anniversary Diamond, Bone Mender, Noble Fencer, Thundering Deity, Anniversary Platinum, uh, Titan Attacker, Chain Clockwork, Captain Titan, uh, Sly Fox, Corrupted Emerald Heart, and Anniversary Gold. So again, I'm getting the crafting power up. I'm completing these sets. I'm not actually using any um, shards completed legendaries. Majority of this is from drops because when I've completed the Treasure Hunter set, that increases the rarity of drops. And um, recently, I've been collecting farming gold in the last two three weeks and whenever there's been a completion bundle set so sometimes it will appear uh, when you hit milestones and stuff you uh, underneath this icon and tournament bottom left right over here there is uh, an offer to complete a set if if it's a completed set of a legendary set for diamonds if there's only one or two pieces so it's quite cheap or well, cheapish i tend to get it because completes i'm trying to start completing the sets now so i've, I've moved i've moved i've moved my focus from completing as many sets as I can as, as opposed to collecting diamonds for uh, pets and, and titan chests and that sort of thing. I might still buy chests from time to time, um, chest and pets if I'm in a tournament and I need an extra little boost. But at the moment, I'm saving up my diamonds to use them uh, for completing legendary sets. And then I'm using my shards, only my shards, to complete as many mythic sets. That is giving me the 10K boost in the last you know, two weeks. And also I've completed all my artifacts and now I'm just looking to do my enchantments. So getting those enchantments uh, finished really is doing that as well. I'm currently in tournament. If you want to know how I'm doing, I am first at the moment. My max stage is say is 8.58 and a half. So I've just really started joining. So I'm just farming in the background. And if you want to look at my other stats as well, I might as well go through all of them so you're up to date. Uh, so my passives. These are my passive level levels, doing quite decent. So my clan's quite active, so level 40 is going to help loads. Splash is quite high, this is quite high. So that's why I'm looking for probably Heavenly Strike set, but only after I've completed my AG set. So I probably would have another 
couple hundred uh, sh skill points by then because I've still got my, like what seven mythic point uh, mythic items to collect to complete the set I'm doing and for the AAG set. So my equipment all hero damage because I'm still running a hero build. My strongest hero that I've got equipped all gold because that's the strongest income I've got at the moment. Uh, helmet boost again because it's the strongest one I've got at the moment and clan ship I could do with a better clan ship item some artifacts um just following as i mentioned following artifact optimizer i'll probably go for it in more details in a second because i believe there was a question about it in the last videos so i'll go for that in a lot more details in a momento so i thought i'll answer some questions from the last ep uh, last video thanks very much for leaving the comments questions they're amazing it tells me what you guys are looking at um what kind of area i can move towards because if i get a lot of the same questions and it tells me what video i need to do next for guides and it helps me kind of move the, the videos and channel in the right direction so thank you very much for your comments They're absolutely amazing okay yeah this is one example as i mentioned about the artifact optimizer so da uh, a factor says how you use the artifact optimizer after books of shadows is enchanted i'm confused because my books of shadows percentage is different in game so i'll bring the artifact optimizer that i use so you simply go to uh, tap Tyson's to Compidium. And I use the ones in tool corner. So at the top right, there's something there called tool corner. Click on that. And then go down to artifact optimizer on the left. So this is what it will look like. I just put it onto the left so you can see it while I'm comparing it to the actual in-game. So as I have done a video about how to use an artifact, artifact optimizer in detail. So I'll drop a link to that in the description and maybe icon it above. Uh, that goes for it much, much for detail, but this is a quick overview. So lifetime relics, uh, you go to stats right at the bottom, which is relics earned. So you type that in. So you type in exactly what it says. I'm just gonna switch the automation off. Oh, it's already off, that's fine. So 9.99 e87 artifacts owned this is on your artifact tab and at the moment i've got 97 out of 97 and enchantments you just type in exactly the same enchantments as shown so i've got 14 so put 14 now this answers your question so when it says um the artifact optimizer says after books of the shadows in is enchanted you just need to match up the artifacts owned and enchanted to this. Now, enchantments are in set order. So the very first enchantment is Books of Shadows. So if you match up the number, the system will know exactly which ones, which enchantments you have and which ones you haven't. So all you need to do is make sure that your enchantment owned and your artifact owned matches this. You know, what's, what's actual in-game. And then you literally, once you fill the rest in, just copy what it says. Just copy exactly the amount as it says on there. Now you should be, when it comes to um, Books of Shadows, in between tournaments, you should be leveling us up over 80%. Uh, well, I say 50% LTR as a minimum, um, but most people have it over 80 or 90%, which is good for tournament. But you should be concentrating in between tournament and leveling us up anyway. So you should be putting 100% of your relics into the Books of Shadows. So again, it doesn't matter about following this bit because you're not leveling up your Books of Shadows. You're not using the, um, the Artifact Optimizer to level up your Books of Shadows because you're doing that outside of tournament. In tournament, you're ignoring Books of Shadows. So again, it doesn't matter about leveling that because you've you're finished leveling it up now you you're putting books of shadows on hold you're not leveling it anymore uh, so what you need to do is just put in the level your books of shadows is so you can either do it by percentage but i do bos level books of shadows level because it's much more easier to type in and just copy exactly what it says so mine says it's level 1.69 e25 so where is it on this uh yeah there you go level one 0.69 e25 ignore all this this doesn't matter ignore that that's just going to confuse you salvage and all that kind of stuff is this bit here so these are the levels you're looking at on the main bit so you just literally type it in 1.69 e25 and then you do click, click to calculate or turn it into automation automatic and then when you scroll down here as i mentioned because it says we're ignoring it says a percentage of available relics used 100%. It basically means what percentage of relics are you going to use to level up the rest of your artifacts, not your books of shadows, and you want to use 100%. So again, you're not going to um, level up your books of shadows. As I said, mine, mine's pretty similar. It says BOS plus 25, E25, 1.25. So it's very close. You know it's it's correct. Now, this percentage is 6.8%. 6 
6.88 and mine says 39.74 ignore that these percentages are not going to be completely accurate because i haven't spent the relics exactly as the optimizer says so for example the chest of contentment i've leveled up to level 6 e30 but on the optimizer it should say it should be level zero so i've spent relics in different places that why that's why this percentage on the side is never going to match unless you've leveled up every single artifact exactly as the optimizer says the levels the percentages here will never match up never match up so ignore that doesn't really matter what we're looking at is the ideal level you want to get these up as close as you can to them so on my one it says my stones or val runes should be 0.31 mine's e30 so when i next prestige i should really put some more uh, relics into this one and again this one says uh, these ones are leveled higher than it is book of prophecy e27 i've got mine e27 that's perfect kb37 so you just match them up match them up as, as shown on the screen now there is i'm doing a separate video that's going to go through uh leveling basically in a bit more detail so like how to use optimizers correctly that's a probably what i'm going to title the the video because what i've noticed one thing i've noticed a lot in discord or people mention comments is that there's a couple of errors not errors but a couple of like like little mistakes and things you can do to help improve your optimize optimization uh basically people follow the artifact optimizer exactly now there's a couple of pros and cons to that the pro it means this the optimizer is used to tell you as a guide so it's not set in stone it's a guide to tell you the best way to get the best power for your build so if you're using a clanship build it's going to tell you to put everything that helps clanship so that's your all hero damage clanship damage that sort of thing now the problem with that is that if you were to swap the build so say for example after three months playing you think oh, i've had enough of clanship I want to change to heavenly strike you will have no damage or little to no damage in heavenly strike if you followed the optimizer exactly because you've been following the optimizer it's not told you to level up anything in heavenly strike or anything that helps heavenly strike so if you also swap the build you have to start from scratch and you probably have to spend maybe a few days re-leveling all your artifacts to your new build so once you swap you're just going to see basically it's very very likely you won't hit your current max stage you probably lose power and you probably spend a few days re-leveling your artifacts that's another thing second thing as well is with the artifact optimizer it the especially this tool version it always levels up what you currently have and it doesn't take into account your um equipment set bonuses your item set bonuses and, and pet bonuses and that sort of thing it's just your artifacts that's looking at so say for example you've got an artifact that boost um so using a pet gold income but your strongest gold items has a boost in fairy if you add a, a few extra artifact um levels in fairy income that will give you a little bit of increase in gold even though your your optimizer on the right it says don't level fairy income because you're not using fairy income if you have an equipment bonuses if you have equipment that uh, boosts fairy income and you put a bit of relics in fairy it'll still give you a bit extra than you would normally have okay so here's a prime example because my um my main hero is a ranged person it's telling me not to put any damage into flying type or any damage into spell type so it says here i should have those ones at level zero now if i did keep that level zero and the next hero to be unlocked is spell so this is spell one's my next one so when i go to unlock the next one which is the spell one because my levels are at level zero i've got nothing in it at all you suddenly hit a softball because you've got no power there so then you've got to spend a couple of runs leveling that up again so that's why i tend to you see me in the previous episodes level your heroes evenly so that's your your um, spell ranged melee because when you do swap to the next hero there's no downtime it's just continue continuously um riding to the next like you know max stage past that wall so these are a couple of tips that that i'm going to follow up into a much more in-depth uh, video so obviously follow hit the bell notification if you aren't already so you're up to date when that drops hopefully it should be in the next couple of days so it's, that's basically is it is a long explanation about that uh, the factor 
but I hope that uh, cleared up a bit. Uh, cleared up a bit. So when I said when you're using the artifact optimizer, you're not leveling up your books of shadows anyway. You just level that up as much as you can. You're not using optimizer for your books of shadows anyway, so that doesn't matter at all. You're using it for the other ones. And as I mentioned, I will link the full guide on how to use it if you're still not too sure. Okay, um, AP student or Patrick Knee says, I already have four pieces of Dragon Slayer. Is it okay to craft it or wait for the uh, wait when the boss drops it? Uh, Dragon Slayer, I believe that's a legendary set. Let's have a look. Yeah, Dragon Slayer. Okay, so you're one item away. Um, what I'll do is I wouldn't wait for the drop because for that for the that legendary item to drop is going to be low, and for it to drop the exact piece you want is going to be very low as well. So I wouldn't wait for the drop. Uh, there's two options. I would only use shards to buy it if you're in a tournament, and having that will help you get a higher position. So for example, I don't know, maybe you're second or third, and having a better mana capacity. Because um, also this increases your all active score effects, so it will help you push a little bit. Uh, it helps you get your first place, absolutely use it. If it doesn't, if you've already got first and you're quite good and comfortable, then I'll just either, I'll probably wait until the uh, diamond, because the diamond bundle pops up, which gives you the chance to complete a set for a cost of diamonds. So rather save your shards for a mythic set, and use diamonds to complete it but it's totally up to you um, i said more more sets you complete it does give you increase in crafting power and all active school effect is pretty decent so if you've got you know you've got the spare shards it may be worth it uh, personally as i said me i'll rather use diamonds to complete it um, but if you've got the spare shards hell use use the shards okay um yan yan shang says hey so maybe you should talk more about skill balls and stuff because many people who've just started would just spend their skill points and random stuff not knowing what to do. Um, I have done previous videos about skill builds, beginners guides, optimizers. Uh, there's a playlist which I'll link at the end of this video and in the description. So it's called Tap Titans 2 Playlist. Uh, in there you've got a beginners guide video, you've got a build resources guide video. So the build resources tells you about where to find build guides, how to make your own build guide, how to use optimizers, basically everything you need to do about builds and build optimizers. So that's a good video. Um, uh, also this one if you're new as i mentioned the clan ship build is the go-to builds default one and if you watch the beginning of this series like episode one two and three it shows you how to begin a game from zero stage zero use the clan ship build and then you can just follow me as i go along if you wish to do so so you can watch this series there's i think like 70 or 80 videos about tap titans on my channel so yep i covered everything so if you need to if you need to, to know stuff about skill builds, just watch the Tap Titans 2 playlist. It's all in there, my friend. Uh, there's another one called Rolling Pokeball. Is there anything in the video about when I should buy new artifacts? Yep, again, if you watch the Beginner's Guide video, uh, the, also the top 10 tournaments and stuff like that, I do explain about that. And if you watch the beginning of this series, then it shows you when I buy new artifacts. But basically when I do it is when they're in tournaments only. So you only, they only, best time to redo it is in tournaments because outside tournament is all about leveling up your books of shadows to get the relics ready and in tournaments is about getting everything so completing mythic sets and getting pets and getting new artifacts using the art or up uh, sorry using the artifact optimizer to level up your artifacts now during tournaments i normally get a new artifact when it costs one run if, it, if i have to do three or four runs to afford it then it, it's too soon I should be leveling up my books of shadows, getting stronger and that sort of thing, leveling up my artifacts. Um, if it only costs one run, maybe two runs, then I'll buy a new artifact if it's cheap. So that's when I normally do it. The reason I do it in, in tournaments because the first place rewards is what you're aiming for. Every time you get first place reward, it's, it's kind of the biggest rewards you can get in one go, uh, especially if it's a, you know, a skill point tournament or a shards and pet tournament. That helps you push for next time so that's why first place tournaments is quite important as a new player so uh, yeah i hope that answers the question uh matt dorothy is says how do you get crafting shards so quickly i'm currently at level 18,800 and i only have used 449 shards do uh to do this i only have one part ancient warrior let's get this subs um the reason gets them quickly because i said well you've got eighteen thousand, and at the time of that video i had run about 40 and a half so i've done a lot more tournaments very likely i would have done a lot more tournaments than you and if i look at my tournament stats so let's look at my player profile so i've joined 51 tournaments 
and out of those i've had at least um 11 first place wins i always try my hardest to make sure that the first place wins are in shards because the shards give you the best rewards i think um it's around about 300 shards at the moment so 11 can you imagine 11 first class first sorry 11 first place shard wins that's a lot of shards um actually i don't think it's 300 maybe it's a lot less maybe it's 150 and yeah, so I, don't think, I really don't think it's 300, I think it's 150. But regardless, it's a lot of shards. You get a lot of shards rewards for getting first place. That's why I've got so much and that's why I've used used much. Uh, also, I've, I've saved uh, diamonds and I've had uh, Titan chest rewards. Again, I only really get these when they're on when a bonus offer. So if for example, double shards or double skill points, then I'll buy one. And again, that's an extra 100 shards if that happens. So yeah, over the last four months of playing this of the new account, I've been winning as many hard first place tournaments as I can, especially shards one. And I've been getting Titan chests when they've been on double shards. That's why I've got three completed mythic sets already, nearly four. Um, so yeah, these are the tips. Just uh, watch the beginning of the Road to Endgame series and see how I did it. Ace Gaming says, I want to purchase chest for bonus as I have farmed quite a lot of diamonds. So what do you recommend? Shard bonus or dust bonus? Um, I always go shard. Um, you can farm a lot of dust from the solo raids and the clan raids now, especially if you've like, got a high, high clan, but shards are harder to come by. Uh, shards yeah shards and also with with shards if you complete mythic sets the relic bonus is more beneficial plus the mythic set bonus will be quite strong as as opposed to dust bonus uh dust bonus all that really gives you looking for is the uh, arcane passive which is basically makes you run faster while mythic sets just makes everything faster so i'll, I'll definitely go shards just that's my opinion uh, those are all the big ones. So thank again, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, very, very cool, very helpful. I uh, do love them. If you want me to answer them uh, for the next video, leave a comment below. Also, like and subscribe, hit that bell notification. We're actually smashing it. The community is amazing. Join the Discord below if you want to ask any questions to me directly. Plus, I normally uh, dump there, so like private private sessions upcoming projects and special little vip stuff so if you want to get to know the you know little inner workings or special treatments special treatments that's a bit too much but if you want to get a bit of heads up for what's happening go join the discord also twi uh, stream on twitch every sunday at 8 p.m gmt time so you can ask me q and a's live there and on air and yeah that's it and apart from that have an amazing day hope you do well in the tournament and i'll see you on the next video take care bye